Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Maher Lewis, and today we're going to be discussing uh, plan production. A lot of engineers in this industry uh, have no problem producing. Uh, uh, plan production is a great, uh, a great tool. Sheet Manager is even more valuable because it allows you to uh, then print a whole set of plans. And uh, of course, Civil 3D is dynamic, so once you do your plan production once, and once you've done your sheet manager once, uh, really all it takes is just Civil 3D uh, revisions, and it'll automatically pop, um, propagate to your plan production, and then propagate into your sheet manager. So uh, this demonstration will will show that. And plans production is a new functionality in Civil 3D 2008, and it's driven by two functions, creating view frames and then creating the sheets from those view frames. So we'll start off with by creating the view frames and it is a wizard that steps us through in a logical manner. And we can see that the wizard is such that uh, we have some uh, great image tiles which allow us to see exactly the selections that we're making. When I switch to a plan only view, the little image tile shows us what we're going to expect. Now, when I elect to do plan and profile generation, the scale and the shape and size of the viewports is directly related to the template that I choose. So here I'm going to choose a B size sheet at a 20 scale. The view frames can be placed along the alignment or they can all be rotated in one direction. And I also have the abil ability to set that first view frame in front of the start of the alignment. This gives me a little salvage or a little buffer at the beginning of the alignment. Uh, next, since this is going to generate a civil 3D object, I do have to give it a name and a style. And so that's what I'm doing right now, is setting the name. These are the styles. And I'll step through to the next options which allow me to snap my match lines for the view frames uh, to an incremental value if I wish. In this case I'm going to snap to the nearest 10 units. In this case the units are feet. I'm also going to allow a quite a large buffer in order to move or reposition my match lines so that I can um, make sure that certain objects are contained on one sheet or another. And we'll see what I mean in just a moment. Um, again, match lines are a civil object, so they need to have a name and a style, as shown here. And I'm going to go ahead and create the view frames. You can see the view frames have been created, the light magenta. And if I look at the prospector tab, and if I expand the view frame groups, we can see that these are indeed civil objects, so that means that I can zoom to those. And when I zoom to the view frame, we can see the match lines in red, the view frames in light uh, magenta. And let's go to the first view frame. The view frames we can manipulate manually if we wish. And again, with grips and the glyphs that show up from them, I can adjust this along the alignment. Notice that when I get to a turn in the alignment, that the view frame is smart enough to follow along. So I can adjust them horizontally. I can also go in and manually twist the view frames. So I have manual overrides. Let's take a look at the match lines. And let's uh, zoom to a match line and zoom to another match line. And in this particular case, here's a condition or a case where uh, the match line is not in a very good position. It's splitting this uh, building structure and I want to have that structure all on one sheet or the other, which means I can move because I indicated I wanted to have a 100-foot uh, buffer on each side to allow me to reposition the match line. So here I'm going to land the match line right here so that uh, the structure is all on one sheet and the culvert structure or underpass structure here is also not split. Um, when I zoom in, we can see that 
It's given and automatically labeled the station where the match line is, and the hash marks are fields that are placeholders for when I generate a sheet. So we've set up the view frames, and now the next step is to go in and actually generate the sheet. The dialog box and wizard step us through, and again, a very similar manner to what we did in setting up the view frames. We have the ability to set these layouts all in the current drawing, or to create them in new drawings, and we also have the ability to number those. And this would be in the instance of a very, very long alignment, where we don't want to bog down a drawing with a lot of layout paths. Also, we have the ability to put in a north arrow block. The north arrow block will automatically react to the uh, twist of the view frame and position itself correctly. It will automatically create a sheet step, and that is for um, drawing management. And if you haven't explored sheet sets, I highly recommend that you look into it. We need to create the profile settings. And so I'm going to visit the profile wizard. The profile wizard, for the first time now, we are able to have split profiles. And this is a good case where we might have a very high vertical exaggeration, or perhaps we have a very steep change in elevation. In this case, we can create split profiles, and we can have them created manually or automatically. And just when we do it automatically, we simply um, tell us what the height of the view is. And then we can indicate the items that we wish to sample in those profiles. So now we're going to go ahead and create the sheet in the drawing. Now it will get a notification that the drawing will be saved. Slide over here to the side, and we're going to generate those profile views before the sheets are calculated. Now, this, as you can see, will add tabs to the bottom of this drawing. That is simply what I indicated to put these layouts in the drawing. And when the profiles show up, let's take a look at an example of a split profile. So here's a split profile, and it's all been scaled to fit at the indicated 1 inch equals 20 feet. If I zoom in here, we can see that the profile splits here and the datum drops 20 feet. We have a change in datum of 20 feet. Increase, actually. So now, as I look at one of the sheets that has been generated, we can see some interesting, interesting features. Notice that the North Arrow and Graphic Scale come in in the upper right. Notice that the match line, if I zoom in, has filled in with the proper sheet value. So the hash marks were replaced by the appropriate sheet value, that is adjoining. And notice that I have elected to use masking. So any of the information outside of the match lines have been masked. 